Thank you so much. Welcome to our service today. Uh, I want to thank you for taking your time to be with us here as we share the word of God. My Jesus, we are here again in this place of prayer. It's a season that we have to give ourselves to prayer, looking at the extraordinary uh, events and uh, situations that we are going through. Remember, such situations calls for deeper prayer. Okay. So today I, I want to continue to talk to you about our season of spiritual warfare. Our season of spiritual warfare. I believe we are in that season where we have to master how to war, master how to fight. And... Uh, you have to know without any doubt that spiritual uh, we are called as, 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 as children of God not to uh, walk in the park. Christianity is not just a bed of roses. It's not just a walk in the park. This is the battleground of all ages. So we need to know that particularly this moment we are when the enemy is ravaging releasing all kinds of things to destroy our faith releasing all kinds of things to discourage a believer you need to know as i spoke to you that these are dangerous times which calls for deeper level of faith which calls for deeper levels of prayer you cannot survive such times if you are just a shallow believer you need to go deeper you need to deepen to be rooted in christ jesus Lord Jesus, let me read uh, from the book of 1st John chapter 5. Uh, I'm going to take my reading from verse 4. It says here, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Hear that. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Even our faith. It says, Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. That which is born of God overcomes the world. What is that which overcomes the world? That which is born of God. I need you to understand something. You are born of God. First of all, you need to know who you are and what you, where you came from. You need to know that you are born of God. You cannot overcome the world if you are not born of God. What is to be born of God? To be born of God is to be born of the Spirit. Is to be born from above. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 1 verse 12. It says, for those that received him, he gave them power to become sons of God. In other words, they, they are given power. There is power you need to become. There is a certain power that comes on you that makes you become a son of God. You cannot just be a son of God because you, you 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 know about him you cannot be a son of god because you grew up in the you grew up in a church or you are a religious person you have to receive jesus in order for you to be born of god and the bible goes on there in that in that portion of scripture it says uh those that are not born of the flesh those that are not born of, out of the will of man or out of the blood but they are born out of the will of god that means they are reborn they are regenerated in their spirit so the bible says these are the ones that overcome the world the bible says this is the fact that we have that overcomes the world even our faith yeah, where there is overcoming it simply means there is a, a war you cannot overcome where there is no war you cannot overcome where there is no challenge you cannot overcome where there is no something contesting with you you overcome because you are in a fight. You overcome because you are you are in a competition. You are contesting with something. We are here. The Bible says the God of this world is the devil. This is the domain that God has given the devil to operate. He has been given right to operate in this world. In this world, the Bible talks of the prince of this world, which is the devil. He has the right and uh, the, to be here and operate. But that should not be the problem. The issue is not about him operating because he has that right to operate. He has been thrown down and he has been given that domain to operate. But here it is. The Bible says, 
uh, God has given us dominion over him. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, he has given us dominion, threefold dominion. I always talk of threefold dominion. The Bible says, I've given you dominion over the sea. That means the marine area, the marine power, the marine life, everything in the sea, the fish, everything that moves there, we have dominion. And the Bible talks about the air force. The Bible says, I have given you dominion over the air, over the things that fly, and dominion over the ground. So we have threefold dominion. Dominion over the, the waters, dominion over the air, dominion over the earth. That's our dominion, threefold dominion. We conquer these places. We overcome. We move in power. We subdue. So the Bible is speaking about your faith. Faith is one of the biggest weapons of our warfare. Remember the Bible says the weapons of our warfare, look on now. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. One of the weapons of our warfare is faith. Above all, you must say faith. Because without faith, you cannot overcome the devil. Because of faith on its own brings victory. Faith brings victory. He says, this is the victory that we have that overcomes the world, if in our faith. So how do you get defeated? The moment you begin to doubt, the moment you begin to live a faithless life, the, the moment you are empty, your faith is weak, you begin to lose the battle. You begin to lose because this is a battle of faith. This is a faith battle. It's not a physical battle. It's a faith battle. That means, how do I, be, I, I, I build my faith? As I build my faith, I am making myself stronger. I am making myself stronger in the battle. As I build my faith, I am making myself stronger than any other demon that may want to come. Because faith overcomes. Faith overcomes. One, let me tell you, the greatest battle begins from within. I, I, there is what we call uh internal warfare and there is what we call external warfare now what is internal warfare internal warfare is actually the highest level of warfare people think that the the biggest warfare is when we are we are engaging principalities and powers that are without without let me tell you the biggest warfare begins from within you when you are able to be in control of your life you have won the warfare when you are able to be in charge of your actions when you are in able to be in charge of your thoughts, when your thoughts are controlling you, you are in the verge of losing the battle, both internal and external. Let me tell you, your internal warfare, your victory in the internal warfare is directly proportional to your victory in the external warfare. You cannot overcome the evil powers that are out if you cannot deal with the internal warfare. That's why you have to be a person that gets it. Uh, you must have dominion over any uh, thoughts that are not godly. Take control of your thoughts. Take control of your mind. Take control of your heart. The Bible talks about guarding your heart. When you guard your heart, you make sure that your heart is free from anything that, 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 that hinders the grace of God. Free from anything that hinders the flow of the Spirit of God. What are those things? Bitterness, when you become bitter, already you have failed to guard your heart. You have allowed things to offend you. Bitterness is caused by offense. When I get offended and I fail to forgive, what happens? Unforgiveness leads to anger. Anger leads to hurt. Hurt leads to bitterness. And as I say, I become a bitter. I have resentment. I become unforgiving. I bear grudges. All these things, they weaken the flow of the power of God in your life. They weaken your faith. Remember, faith operates through your heart. And your heart has to be, uh, to be at peace. Your heart has to be pure. Your heart has to be sound for faith to work. If your heart is not sound, you cannot release faith. And when your faith is weakened, you cannot stand the war, the, the, in the warfare. You cannot stand. Remember, the devil is the spirit. And when we contend with him, we must fight with him spiritually. Without us being spiritual, we have no match with him. In the flesh, we have no match with the devil. He's an ancient serpent. He has mastered all ways of deception. We have to have faith in God. That's why the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not canal. They are mighty through God. That means it, 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 it is only through God that we are able to win. It is only through God that we are able to subdue. Outside him, we are vulnerable. Outside him, we can be defeated. 
So I want you to understand time has come for you to move in faith. Don't doubt. When you begin to doubt, remember Peter. Peter was in a warfare. Let me show you the life of warfare. When Peter saw Jesus walking on the water, Jesus was demonstrating dominion over the, the marine power. Remember I told about three, I spoke about three, four, three, four dominion. Jesus was demonstrating dominion over the sea. And Peter saw Jesus. And he said, Lord, if it is you, let me come. I also want to partake in this dominion. I want to experience. Jesus said, come. Peter began to come. But as he, Peter was taking a step into the unknown, walking upon the water, the Bible says they rose a boisterous wind. It began to rise and Peter looked at the wind and he began to sink. What happened? He saw something. So when the devil is fighting us, so he fights us with the things that we see. He fights us with what we hear. He fights us with the, the rumors. He fights us with the, what we are feeling. He fights us with the things of the, the, what that we are seeing. But I want you to realize something. The Bible says, while we look at the things that are not seen, for the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen are permanent. So when we are fighting, we should not look, do not walk by sight. When you walk by sight, you will lose the battle. Oh my God, you will lose the battle. Don't walk by sight. Remember the servant of Elisha. He was walking by sight. One day they woke up and the king of Syria had sent his army to capture Elisha because Elisha was uh, exposing his plot against the king of Israel. And when the, 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 the servant woke up, he saw the, 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 the army of Syrians uh, like a multitude from the mountain. And he said, alas, my master, alas, my master, what shall we do? Elisha said, don't worry, young man. Elisha prayed and said, God, open the eyes of this young man. Which eyes were opened? This young man was seeing. Can you see that there are two kinds of sight? This young man was seeing, but Elisha is saying, God, open the eyes of this young man. You have to understand that you, you can operate in two visuals. There are two sides that you can operate in. But which one are you operating in? The young man had seen something and he was afraid. But Elisha said, Lord, I pray that you open his eyes. Which eyes? These are not eyes of the physical. These are eyes of faith. These are eyes of the spirit. And when Elisha prayed, the young man saw chariots of fire around Elisha. And the, 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 the confidence, the boldness of the young man was restored. The fear left him. And Elisha told the young man, he said, many are those that are with us than those that are with them. I want to encourage you, somebody. You might be surrounded by lots of things right now. You might be surrounded by things are falling apart. It's like around you right now, nothing is, is good. Everything is not all right. Everything is just uh, contrary to, to, what, to, to what you need. Everything is just not speaking good around your life. You are surrounded by bad things right now. You are surrounded by bad news. But I want you to understand, God can open your eyes so that you can see what is with you. You can see what God is about to do in your life. You can see the plan of God over your life. When the eyes of the young men were opened, he saw the army that was on their side. You are doubting, you are in fear because you don't know who you are. You are in fear because you don't know those that are with you. You don't know the angels that are with you. You are, you are seeing the demons that are attacking you more than the angels that are defending you. When God opens your eyes, you will know your defense. You will know that you are God's apple. You are the apple of God's eye. You will know that many are those that are with you than those that are in the world. You will not be afraid. The reasons why they were ready to go in the den of lions is because they knew the God they had believed. They knew that they had power and dominion over even creatures. They, were, they, they, they understood that the God they served was able to give them dominion, even dominion over fire. And they rendered the fire f powerless. The fire could not consume them. My God, it's a season of warfare. You're going to have to rise to your level of faith. Rise to what God says you are. Rise. This is the warfare we are, we are in. As you win the internal warfare, you are going to win the external warfare. As you win the battles within, if you cannot control yourself, if you cannot take charge of yourself, some people say, I don't even know how I managed to, I don't know what happened. They are not in control. Like that boy, the Bible says that boy could be thrown in the water. Timon was in control of the boy. He was not in charge of his life. 
he could not he was not he was totally defeated he was following the dictates of a demon he was not in charge many people are not in charge of their lives many people are not in charge of their actions they act contrary to what they are they, they want to do they do what they don't want to do apostle Paul says the things that i want to do i don't do but the things I hate, I find myself doing those things. What is God, what is going? It means that something is controlling him. It means that there is a demon that is taking control of himself, taking control of his mind, taking control of his feelings. There's a time that demon can take control of what you're feeling. See, I just feel like I want to kill myself. I just feel like I want to do this. Demon is taking control of you. How do you, you have to recover yourself? First of all, the territory that you must conquer is, you, is yourself. You must win the battle within. You must have control over yourself. You must go where you want to go. You must do what you really want to do. You must not do things that you don't want to do. You must not find yourself in a place where you don't want to be. Because you say, I don't know how I, I got to be here. I don't know why, how I, I got myself into this situation. Take control of yourself. Be in charge. Be in charge. Take control. Put your body under subjection. Apostle Paul says, I put my body under subjection. I control my body. If I cannot control my body, I will lose the warfare. Because this is the first person I must have dominion over. I must have dominion over self. The biggest dominion you can have is the dominion over self. You must first of all have dominion over self before you can have dominion over principalities and powers. The moment you go and speak, your word we have power. The moment you go and speak your word, we have authority. But uh, do you have uh, control? Do you have dominion over your, yourself? Do you have dominion over your heart? Do you have dominion over your thoughts? Are you in control? Are you in control or your mind is controlling you? Or you are being led by, by your feelings? You are being led by your emotions. Are you in control of your emotions? Some people, when they, their emotions rise, they do things that they always regret. They do things that they always regret after a few days. Why? Because they have not yet mastered control over their lives. So I'm talking about internal warfare. But we need to understand this warfare. The biggest weapon of our warfare we have is faith. The Bible says this is the victory we have that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Your faith. You, it is a time that we need to live by faith. What does the scripture say? It says the just shall live by faith. We are come. Brethren, we have come to the season where the just shall live by faith. We have come, people of God, where the just shall live by faith. We cannot assure your protection from the medical uh, side. Medicine is failing. We cannot assure your protection from your wealth. Even those with wealth, they are losing it. It is a dangerous time. It is a time that everyone is affected. Everyone is humbled, including those that live in glass houses. Those that live in the palaces, everybody is humbled. So, which, which season is this? It's a season that only the just shall live by faith. Because this is the victory we have that overcomes the, the world, even our faith. Develop your faith every day. I have a message for you. Develop your faith every day. Feed on the word every day. Don't allow the news to always control. You're listening to the news is fine. But news is going to bring fear. Before you can hear the worldly news, hear the news in the Bible. There is good news there. Before you can hear the worldly news, hear the good news. The good news says you shall not die. You will live and declare the works of God. The good news says you are protected. The good news says you, you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Doesn't matter you, have, you, you are infected with coronavirus. Doesn't matter you have cancer. It doesn't matter you have HIV virus. It doesn't matter you have whatever disease. The Bible says you are healed in the, in the name of Jesus Christ. Your healing is in the past tense. Your healing is already paid for. My God, I want to speak to you, child of God. What are you going through right now? Do not look at the situation. Don't let the situation detect your, your, your direction. But don't allow God's word to lead your direction. Don't let what you're going through detect your direction. But allow the spirit of God through his word to detect your direction. We are not walking by sight. The Bible speaks very clearly. He says, uh, this is the victory that we have that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Our faith is a weapon. Our faith is a weapon. Even Jesus, when he prayed for Peter, he said, you are going to be attacked. 
But I pray for you that your faith, your faith, your faith may not fail. Your faith may not fail. This is my prayer for you. Your faith must not fail. Your faith will not fail in that situation. Your faith will not fail in that uh, valley you are. Valley of dead. Valley of uh, poverty. Valley of sickness. Valley of death. Your faith will not fail. What are you going through? Business is falling apart. You, your house is about to, bank is about to repossess the house. Bank is about to repossess the car. Everything you have worked for a long time, it's about to go, to evaporate like just like that. Your faith will not fail. Your faith will not fail. This is the victory we have that overcomes the world, even our faith. The Bible speaks and says, when the Son of Man shall come, will you find faith on earth? Faith above, of all graces, God honors faith most. Of all graces, because faith, with faith you can overcome. You cannot be defeated with faith. I want to, refer, to, to challenge you. Attend to your faith. Attend to your faith. How do you do that? Eat the word. Feed on the word. Feed on the word. If there is time we need the word more than ever, it's now. Feed on the word. Be a person of the word. Be, let your Bible be your friend more than your phone. Let your Bible be your friend more than anything. Let your Bible be your food. Attend to your faith because you will need faith. They just are going to live by faith. They just are going to live by faith. Oh my God. I